Ragnarok is the catastrophic destruction of the cosmos and everything in it, including the gods. For the Vikings, the myth of Ragnarok was a prophecy of what would come at an unknown and indeterminate future moment. The word Ragnarok comes from the Old Norse Ragnarok, Fate of the Gods, Twilight of the Gods. There are two versions of the Ragnarok myth. In one of them it is the ultimate end of the cosmos, and it is not followed by any rebirth in the other, as we will see below if there is one. Do you know what is worse than the end of the world? Worse than the apocalypse? Worse than the end of time? Well, most of those who have seen my videos have not subscribed. It's free. You just have to hit the subscribe button and that's it. New content every week. And now we begin. Someday, when the Norns, weavers of fate, have decided, there will come a great Fimble winter like no other the world has yet seen. Biting winds will blow snow from all directions, and the sun's heat will fail, plunging the land into cold like never before. This winter will last for three normal winters, with no summers in between. Mankind will become so desperate for food and other necessities of life that all laws and morality will collapse, leaving only the fight for survival. It will be an age of swords and axes. Brother will kill brother, father will kill son, and son will kill father. The wolves Skull and Hati, who have hunted the sun and moon across the skies since the dawn of time, will finally catch up with their prey. The stars will also disappear, leaving nothing but a black void in the heavens. Yggdrasil, the great tree that holds the cosmos together, will shake, and all the trees and even the mountains will fall to the ground. The chain that has been holding the monstrous wolf Fenrir will be broken, and the beast will run free. Jormungandr, the mighty serpent that lives at the bottom of the ocean and encircles the land, will rise from the depths, spilling the seas over the entire land. These convulsions will rock the Nagalfar ship and free it from its moorings. This ship, which is made from the fingernails and toenails of dead men and women, will sail easily over the flooded land. Your crew will be an army of giants, the forces of chaos and destruction, and its captain will be none other than Loki, the traitor of the gods, who will have freed himself from the chains with which the gods have bound him. Fenrir, with fire burning in his eyes and nostrils, will run across the land with his lower jaw on the ground and his upper jaw against the top of the sky, devouring everything in his path. Jormungand will spit its venom all over the world, poisoning land, water, and air alike. The dome of heaven will split, and from the rift will emerge the fire giants of Muspelheim. His leader will be Surt, with a flaming sword brighter than the sun in his hand. As they march across Bifrost, the rainbow bridge to Asgard, the home of the gods, the bridge will break and fall behind them. An ominous horn blast will sound. This will be Heimdall, the divine sentinel, blowing the Jaller horn to announce the arrival of the moment the gods have feared. Odin will eagerly consult the head of Mimir, the wisest of all beings, for advice. The gods will decide to go to battle, even knowing what the prophecies have predicted about the outcome of this confrontation. They will arm themselves and face their enemies on a battlefield called Vigrid, known as the Battle Plain. Odin will fight Fenrir, and at his side will be the Einherjar, the host of his chosen human warriors whom he has kept in Valhalla for just this moment. Odin and the champions of men will fight braver than anyone has ever fought before. But it won't be enough. Fenrir will swallow Odin and his men. Then one of Odin's sons, Vidar, burning with rage, will charge the beast to avenge his father. On one of his feet will be the shoe that has been crafted for this very purpose. It has been made from all the scraps of leather that human shoemakers have ever thrown away. And with it, Vidar will keep the monster's mouth open. He will then plunge his sword into the wolf's throat, killing it. Another wolf, Garm, and the god Tyr will kill each other. Heimdall and Loki will do the same, putting an end to the trickster's treachery, but costing the gods the best of themselves in the process. The god Freyr and the giant Surt will also be the end of each other. Thor and Jormungand, those old enemies, will finally get a chance to kill each other. Thor will be able to knock down the great serpent with blows from his hammer, but the snake will have covered him with so much poison that he won't be able to stand on his feet much longer. He will take nine steps before dropping dead and adding his blood to the already saturated ground. Then the remains of the world will sink into the sea and nothing will remain but the void. Creation and everything that has happened since then will be completely undone, as if it never happened. 
Some say that's the end of the tale, and of all tales for that matter. But others hold that a new, green, and beautiful world will rise from the waters. Vidar and some other gods, Vali, Baldur, Hodur, and Thor's sons, Modi and Magni, will survive the fall of the old world and live happily in the new. A man and a woman, Leif and Lifthrasir, will have hidden from the cataclysm in a place called the Forest of Hodmimir, and now they will come out and populate the lush land where they will find themselves. A new sun, son of the previous one, will rise in the sky, and all this will be presided over by a new, all-powerful ruler.